Hello friends, it's me Vivian from the Paper Letter blog, also known as the Chatty Pen Pal channel. Although I'm seriously considering changing my name to the Anxious Pen Pal channel, but okay. Today I'm going to show you how I made an adorable vintage botanical envelope stack. Now, situations are pretty similar. Noose is with me in my craft room. She's on a chair this time because if I move a little when she's on my legs, she can be really mean. She like pinches my legs. So she's now on a chair, which is better for both of us. <laughs> um, but yeah, always cozy, always kind of nice to have her here. What I showed you so far is the supplies I wanted to use. I uh, used different types of papers, both like vintage book pages and then the white one, the biggest envelope that you see is actually like some kind of, a, it almost feels like fabric, but it's paper and it has gold thread in it. And I think it's really cool. I think maybe Jackie sent that to me, although I'm not entirely sure. And I made different size envelopes out of all of the papers. I didn't keep the measurements, I'm sorry. But the good thing about an envelope stack is that you don't need measurements. The only thing you need to do is make different envelopes in different sizes, going from smallest to larger. And then you can just, that's it. Like mine, I have rectangular ones, I have squ a square one, and it all just works because it's supposed to look a little messy. It's supposed to look a little... I wouldn't say weird, but it's supposed to look like an envelope stack. So you literally can't make any mistakes as long as I think the nicest is when you go from smallest to bigger envelopes at the bottom. And then what I also did is I inked the edges of the envelopes and some of the envelopes completely so that because of course they're all different papers, new papers, old papers, craft paper, I wanted them, I wanted them to have kind of something similar to them and I think that looks quite nice so that's what I did and then what you do with the envelopes is really simple I've done a tutorial on this if you want to check it out but you glue down the next envelope onto the flap of the bottom envelope so you just glue everything together and then when you open the top envelope it opens the second envelope and when you lift up the second envelope it opens the third envelope and you will see what i mean in a second but it's literally that simple and then all there's left to do is decorating and filling the envelopes so i really like this project because it's so free and you can do so many different things so kind of like that um so that's what i'm doing here i'm decorating it and the reason why i made this i made this for mary quite a while ago. I made it for a Patreon swap. The objectives of our swap were to write a letter surrounding New Year's. So either goals you had for the new year or something you wanted to share about the old year, stuff like that. Uh, and then make a project of your choosing. So the theme could be up to you. So I chose Vintage Botanical and that's it. And then I kind of went from there. And of course I had a box of goodies that kind of matched that theme. You can see here that I actually changed my nail polish. I'm just realizing that now. That's the best way to see how long a project takes me. Just count how many different <laughs> uh, sweaters I wear and how many different nail polishes. I'm sorry, we're not in frame here. It's focusing on my head, but I'm basically just dotting around the page with a white jelly roll. And I'm starting to decorate it. And I think that's fun. And I want to talk to you all Ah, what a surprise. The Chatty Pen Pal channel has something to say. <laughs> okay, first of all, before I forget, I want to thank you all for the incredible amount of kindness I received after my last video. In my last video, I talked about my anxiety and about some very personal things relating mental health. And it was really scary. And I redid that voiceover like 28 times. But the amount of love... <laughs> I received the amount of comments and personal messages. Absolutely insane. Did not see that coming at all. It's It literally blew my mind and I'm so eternally grateful. Today I'm not actually going to talk about my own... I'm going to talk about my own mental health in a way, but it's not what you th expect. I can't really talk about my anxiety right now because I'm in the middle of it and that's not... It's easier to talk about when it's over. <laughs> I'm actually going to talk about an article I read. Okay, it's kind of difficult. It's actually really simple, but explaining it might be harder. I basically read a Flow magazine from last year because I'm super behind. And it's about choosing a certain theme. When you have a New Year's resolution, I am aware that it's April, but I'm, I need this example. When you have New Year's resolutions, you can either succeed or you can fail. You can set goals for yourself that you have to achieve. And it's kind of harsh and it's really goal-oriented and 
strict and hmm. But when you choose a theme, it's all about using that theme and asking yourself, if I make this decision, will that help me with my theme? Will that be good for my theme? <laughs> and it can help you either, whether you realize it or not, basically, to achieve what you want to achieve in a much friendlier way. And I really like that. And I'm going to read one part out. It's in Dutch. So if I talk very slowly, it's because I am like literally translating it to English as I'm speaking. Um, but basically, it says that a good theme should be about what you really want, what you're dreaming of and not what you think you should want or what others think you should do. And that kind of hit me because if I'm honest, so much of my decision making is guided or is based on what I think I should be doing and not on what I want or what I want to achieve or what I really dream of. So when you choose a theme, this can help you look at what makes you happy in a way and it sounds very vague but i actually think it's i actually i'm actually gonna do it <laughs> um so there's of course a couple of theme words that they give you as examples i have to translate again because this is in dutch but one of them is simplicity or grow or growth i should say movement adventure journey desire to soul Courage, trust, inspiration, light, flexibility, stability, blossom, balance, compassion, acceptance, mm, visibility, learn or study, expertise, and what's the opposite of so? Harvest. Yes, harvest. So that's some examples or like a theme you could choose and then this theme could okay i will i st i will stop with the explanation i will start telling you about my words and how i think this can help me because i think that might be easier um okay so i have one word that is like the main word and then the other one is kind of to accompany that first word also because it sounds kind of nice in dutch usually my words would always be in English because I think English has so many more meaningful words and is so much more beautiful, but this actually makes more sense in Dutch. So word number one, the most important one is lucht. And that translates to multiple words in English. It translates to air, it translates to sky, it translates to breath. And if you say in Dutch opluchting, it kind of translates to relief like oh i feel so much better now is basically what opluchting means and that is what i want in life and it sounds very vague and the second but i know that and i i know what it means and the second word is licht so you have lucht and you have licht and licht translates to light um and of course i think that in english has two word two meanings and it has two meanings in dutch as well they are the same luckily so light could either mean uh, not heavy and it could mean uh, like sunlight or, or i don't know like not dark <laughs> i don't know how else to explain it other than not heavy and not dark but you know what i mean right and in dutch it means the same so my number one word is lucht which again translates to sky and air and breath and to feel lighter and to feel happy and better and oh, and i think that makes a lot of sense like when i am anxious which i actually really really am right now i have i get no air like i can't breathe so to get air would be amazing but at the same time i can get really stuck in myself in my thoughts i can get stuck inside on the couch and then air and sky would mean going outside getting that feeling of relief and just feeling like walking on air i don't know if this makes any sense but to me it makes so much sense so by the way i really loved this envelope because you will see what I end up doing with a stamp behind the frame. I thought that looked so cute. But that just makes a lot of sense because like 
air and sky and breath. That's what I'm lacking when I'm anxious. So to want that makes sense. And then the other one, light. I think that's mainly about feeling lighter. And I don't necessarily mean in weight, although sometimes I can be a little insecure, but I mean in mentally feeling lighter. And at the same time, you know that saying, you gotta let the light in, I think that's what it entails as well. Like looking on the bright side and focusing on the good instead of the bad. And for me, I think like this theme is supposed to help you make better decisions or, or easier decisions almost. So now I can ask myself, is it going to make me feel lighter? Is it going to make me feel... <sighs> Is it going to give me air? I don't know. This sounds really stupid in English, but I think you get what I mean, right? It's just, it's difficult to explain, but is this going to make me feel? Is it going to bring me what I really desperately wanted to bring me? And examples of this could, for example, be, it doesn't always have to be something that you really love. Like, oh, I'm going to read a book in the sun. Yeah, that's going to bring me lucht and licht. But it can also mean something that I hate doing, such as exercise. Like this morning, I actually, I woke up really early, like accidentally. <laughs> and then I had to go to the hairdresser. So I figured I would just have a lazy morning. But instead I did, I exercised. <laughs> like we have a cross trainer. So I did like a run kind of thing. And I really... I, I really exercise and I absolutely hate doing that. And I did that on Sunday as well. And you, when I say I hate exercise, you don't want to know how much I actually hate, absolutely loathe exercise. So I have to push myself to do it because I know that afterwards I'm going to feel lighter. I'm going to feel better. I'm going to feel that air. Like I'm going to feel like I'm going to be able to breathe better because... I will have achieved something and I will have those endorphins, although I never really know what people mean with endorphins because I still hate exercise. It's not like some people are actually addicted to it, but I hope that makes sense. So it could also be, of course, something that is going to make me happy, but it might at the same time be making a decision um, that instead of staying in bed for another hour, I'm actually going to do something I absolutely hate because in the end, it's going to help me towards my theme, like towards, uh, yeah. Mm, usually I would say that I'm pretty good at explaining things, but when I am this anxious, I get kind of stuck in my head. So I'm finding it difficult to explain, but maybe it makes a lot of sense, maybe it doesn't, but I just wanted to share this with you because I thought this theme, such a powerful tool. Um, there's another example, which is kind of weird, but it's just, it's, it's, it's me, okay? <laughs> It's me. Um, the, what I'm doing in the background is I'm just writing down the tea instructions, like what kind of tea it is and how long you have to steep it. I, I'm pretty sure that's what I wrote. Um, but I hate grocery shopping ever since I've been going, ever since I've had anxiety, like the supermarket is like my least favorite place in the world because it makes me anxious. So lately I've been doing a whole lot of online shopping. Like I just get my groceries delivered to my door, which is great. And it gives me extra time to do other things and I don't have to worry, but it doesn't help me with my theme. It helps me in that moment because I feel great about not going to the place I hate the most. But in the long run, it actually makes me feel worse because whenever I am in a situation like supermarket and I cannot avoid it, I am really out of practice. The thing with anxiety is you have to keep exposing yourself to it as much as that sucks. If I don't go to supermarkets anymore, I will start hating supermarkets even more. So on the long run, not going to that place is helping me. Avoiding my fear is actually really nice, but on the long run, it's making my fears worse. And that's like the supermarket is like a really small example, but it, of course that applies to bigger things as well. Like, yes, I can avoid the things that I'm terrified of, whether that's with work or in social situations or, or visiting my boyfriend in Belgium because I absolutely hate traveling. I don't know. <laughs> I'm literally scared of most things in life, my friends. Um, but in the long term, does that make me, is that helping my theme to feel lighter and more air? No, because is it going to make me happier in the long run? No. Is it going to make me 
Is it going to bring me what I seek the most? Definitely not. In order to get rid, I can never get rid of my anxiety. It's part of me. I mean, I wouldn't even know who I am without it. But in order to get rid of that, I need to do the things that I fear. Goodness. I really hope this made sense. This was a weird story, but I just I read that article and I was like, yes, I need to talk about this in a voiceover because I know you all, you're all similar to me in a way. I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. But I thought this was really powerful and I just wanted to talk about it. So yeah, there's that. I hope you're all doing well, my friends. Um, okay, I'm going to listen to my own voiceover and I'm either going to delete it all or I'm just going to leave it, let it be and upload it. Um... This was my video. Here's the project that we made. I didn't talk about any of the steps, but I think you could follow along because it was a nice and slow video. I also, of course, uh, showed you all of the goodies. I put the letter in the bottom envelope. I really like how this turned out. The last clip is gonna be me showing you the envelope because it, I have to admit it was kind of difficult to send out because it was so bulky. I first wanted to make a small envelope, but it was kind of fat so then i realized that it would actually be thinner so if you want to make an envelope stack this is a tip it's actually a lot thinner if you open it up i mean a doy so i have a huge envelope but it's actually cheaper this way for many people because it's flatter so that's my tip and it's kind of difficult to create a small envelope for an envelope stack because it has odd shapes but okay, this was my messy voiceover. I think that's what you're used to by now, so I'm not gonna apologize. Big thank you to my awesome patrons, and I will talk to you all again soon. Okay, bye!